Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob, and today we are going to be continuing the narration for the main story in Arknights. This is still episode 9, aka chapter 9, however you want to call them, and uh, this is part 3. And by the by, today's episode will feel like we're making a lot of progress when it comes to <laughs> the story and uh, the individual little... Um, the stages themselves because oh boy will stuff go fast and you'll see very quickly why once we get into those but in the meantime if you want to skip the rest of the intro section timestamp is in the comment section below as per usual in the pinned comment by yours truly but for now let's begin with the usual part of on the previous episode well we met dublin or rather, the Spectre Force that has been in the shadows for a long, long time, but now has finally surfaced. We first met the two two of the leaders, rather, in the form of uh, Mandragora and Harmony, who were together supposed to be like special guests at a gathering of nobles and very wealthy individuals of County Hillock, but shit went south. Among the participants during that um, whole uh, ball, or rather feast, or whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, the gathering, were also uh, Lieutenant Horn and Backpipe, who were there pretty much because Horn used her, uh, well, noble lineage to get entrance to the gathering. But as the evening progressed, they met, first off, they met the author of the uh, of the uh, poems that have been mentioned so far throughout the story, who, well, as you've seen, has met a uh, untimely demise very soon after that. As the military stormed the party, suddenly baseball came fl flying through one of the windows, an explosion occurred, Horn managed to protect a lot of civilians, but unfortunately among the victims was uh, the aforementioned uh, the aforementioned rider, who sadly passes away during that evening. A lot of others do get injured as well, and Horn and Backpipe try to book it out of there as fast as possible, because outside in the city, the Spectre Force has finally showed itself to the public. And oh boy, did they show themselves in a blaze of glory all across the district of County Hillock. Led by the de facto leader, a Draco woman that uh, we, <laughs> we the players, do know as Reed, Operator Reed from Rhode Island, which for, for you guys who are following along with the story and uh, don't know a lot about the Operators, um, well, we'll get to the part as to how... How the hell did she join Rhode Island at the end? Or was she already part of Rhode Island? Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Trust me. Uh, but we saw her outside leading the Spectre Force. You can actually even see it. The CG that they used for that is continuously here in the background of this selection screen. And uh, yeah, shit went down. Or rather, it hit the fan in a blazing glory. But yeah, conflict broke out across the city. The Dublin forces managed to occupy a uh, central building, making it their uh, headquarters. And the next day, they uh, went ahead and uh, did some, did some, did some executions. As in, they executed pretty much. Someone that they deemed to be a traitor, which was Sersha, a young woman that was friends with Jenny, aka Shale, Operator Shalak. And, uh, yeah. We also get through that moment before execution a lot of background th through Reed's inner monologue, or shall I say, the leader in quotes, as present during the execution of the traitor, aka, uh, uh, Sersha were also Mandragora and uh, Harmony. Mandragora kept Mandragora, pardon, kept getting very pissy at at, uh, at the leader, 
the entire time that she was not doing a proper job as we quickly learned that Reed is not the actual leader of Dublin forces, but more of a stand-in. She is there, as said, said by herself, because she looks like the actual leader. And as she finally goes to execute Sersha, apparently she didn't do so because Mandragora got so pissy that she managed to fling with her arts a tiny little rock through uh, Sersha's heart just, be just before Reed emulated her with her flames in literally a split second. And yeah, while I will say right here, nothing n that does not uh, alleviate anything that Reed has done up, up until now, because she definitely did a lot of um, nasty shit in the in the name and the face of as the face of uh, the actual leader of Dublin. Oh boy, does she carry baggage? All right, but yeah. Along the way, we have also pretty much down and outright confirmed that the uh, local military as well, the garrison unit there, is not your go good Samaritan either. They, uh, they are pretty much the bad guys in all of this as well, as we've seen. They have been very, um, very racy. <laughs> and that is mildly said. But yeah. That is pretty much where we left off on the previous part. So, let's begin with today's, shall we? Alright then, so, what I meant earlier when I said we're gonna be going fast through these, you can see already right here on stage 9-9 where we're gonna begin today. Most of these have either a before part, or rather, I think every single one of the stages that we are covered, gonna cover today has either a before or an after part. So this is gonna go by very, very fast. And uh, the rest of the stages in between have almost nothing. Like 9-11 here, for example, has nothing. <laughs> and there's a lot of these. So we're gonna be zooping by. But anyway... Let's begin on stage 9-9, titled The Innocent. There is evil taking place, and the innocent die for an ideal. Strange stone statues have appeared on the battlefield, rising silently above the ruins. Uh, speaking of the stone statues, also with today's episodes, on almost every single one of these uh, stages, I will be including... Um, the descrip description of certain enemies because there are interesting little details in there that I just want to uh, point out and mention. But first, because this is a before part, we're going to go over the story first and then look at that list. So let's begin. <clears throat> I'm back. I found some bread and clean water. Craig's been running about most of the night. He needs to fill up his stomach. Um, what's wrong with everyone? What happened? It's her. She's the one who tipped the Victorian army off. She killed Sersha. What are you talking about? Sersha. What happened to Sersha? You're asking? She's dead. You black-hearted Victorian soldier. You got close to her just so you could pluck intel from her uh, from her own mouth, didn't you? And now she's being executed. Are you happy? I... I never even thought... How could this... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sersha. Save your tears. You're no, you have no right to be sad for her, and you have no right to be standing here. I was sincere with her, always. Sincere? A Victorian soldier telling us Taran's sincerity? What a joke of the ages. Aren't we all countrymen? Countrymen? What do you even know of our country? Have you eaten the grains we eat, spoken the language we speak, felt the pain we feel? 
but I've always wanted to help you. Don't come any closer. Put down your flag. You're not calling for backup on us. I don't want to. I wasn't... Get out of our land. There again will... The home of... The Tarrants need victorious ens ensign. You want me gone? We've got no choice. You saw how I never even did any wrong, and yet none of you should just let me go. I think Ronan was right. We have a chance now. If you can just win, then nobody will ever come hassling me or Craig again. Craig, do you... We don't need you. Stone? Have you seen the looks in their eyes before? In their eyes, no matter how you behave. We aren't the same kind. So it was me who never figured it out. I should go. <clears throat> the troops are retreating in, in defeat. Over half the block in the city will soon fall into the Spectre Force's hands. How they break so quick? I was thinking, even if their organization or uh, organization in training was rock bottom level, at least they could hold out until tomorrow morning. You noticed how the squad from the barracks behaved just now, didn't you? I saw it. We weren't holding the stadium together, but once the enemy came, they all ran for the rear in a flash. Would have been useless no matter how we held out. They seem to have completely lost their will to fight. That might be it. After all, it was a situation just now. The enemy shows up, the residents in refuge all cheer for him and open their gates in. Any soldier would be a little deflected uh, watching a scene like that. But Colonel Hamilton doesn't seem in any way like the kind who gives up this easily. He especially values County Hillock. The barracks might be at a disadvantage right now, but they didn't seem to be in any chaos at all when they retreated. They still had firm organization. I can only believe that this present state still falls into the Colonel's plans. He has some other intent in this war situation. Closest forces are County Kevin's barracks. If we sent out the signal for help, they could get here by evening soonest. Assuming they received the signal in the first place. Worried about problems with the comp system? It's our third day since coming here, and we still haven't received any news from Londinium. County Hillock is like one lone island at this moment. No problem, just a few grenades and a wee squad of minced, uh, mixed forces. I'll sort it out. This street's still safer for the time being. Backpipe, remember in training when you just just joined us, I gave you two hours of weighted handstand push-ups as a punishment. Of course I never forget, leader. It wasn't much of a bad punishment as far as I'm concerned, but for a while I really thought you didn't like me too much. <sighs> I never told you why. Actually, I was it was because... You told me as you were reporting in, you'd stuffed minced pudding and blankets in your marching bag. Huh? That's a hometown treat. It's good, honest. You said much the same at the time. On the day of the solo cross-counter test, you were already starving when you came back, and you obviously kept food in your bag, but you still wouldn't eat it. I couldn't really bear to. I was going to have it as a reward for myself once the training was over. Down at the happiest moment. I once maintained that a person too attached to her home, unable to surmount the past, could not become a good officer. So though your grades at Royal uh, Guard were exceptional, and Instructor Slim spared no effort to recommending you to me, I still had doubts as to your potential. So that's what it was, but you've been awful nice to me since. You proved yourself. I gradually came to understand. It's only because you have an indestructible attachment in you that you could become who you are today, a most excellent Victorian soldier, someone to surpass me. 
Backpap, what I say next, you need to listen well. We have to give up on this block. I'm about to take Cello's group to our comms base in the northeast corner. We're hoping it hasn't been occupied by the Spectre Force yet. And you, go immediately to the contact station, find a messenger, and ensure you find uh, them a way out of the city too. If there's already no way left, then make one. Backpipe, I order you. Shy at no cost. You have to relay out what's happened in County Hook. Okay, uh, damn it. The others are all with the leader doing more meaningful things, and I get the rock, uh, the rotten luck of sweeping up here. Funny, now that I think about it, there's fighting going on all over. Why would the leader insist I sweep clean around the statue? Uh, huh? Who, who is it? What are you grabbing at me for? <laughs> is this where Sersha died? Sersha? You mean the traitor the leader executed? Yeah, it was all her fault. She's dead, and you want me and you want me here bloody sweeping up the ashes. You mean what you're sweeping is Rubbish. Nothing more. <laughs> no. She was a good girl. To her family, to her friends. She was so warm. She gave everything for the city. Why? Why? What did she even do wrong? She teared up just reading romance novels. She'd never have it in her to harm anyone. What in the world is wrong with you? Do you sympathize with this traitor? Just who are you? She's not called traitor. Her name is Sersha. She shouldn't be lying here so alone. I'm taking her back home. They've got the screw loose. I'm leaving. What a dickhead! <clears throat> What's happening over there? Sir, there's someone strange crouching there going on about taking the traitor home. I think she might be an enemy as well. And a traitor too. Alright, good on you for reporting. Hey, who are you? <laughs> Jenny just talking to herself. Sersha, maybe you were wrong, and so was I. You used your life to protect these people, and they didn't even care that you did, and they welcomed the rioters too. The way the city turned out now, they're not that innocent at all. Are you from the other side? The other side? I don't know anymore which side I'm even stood on. Don't move anymore, and your skull is. Delve with yet another few. Rebel some drags. <laughs> I'll take however many I can. I can do in on the retreat. Hey, move here over there. Have you seen more of them about? Drags. Calling Sersha rubbish. Of course they're drags. They just went running that way. We'll head right over. It seems as if I heard the residents' shrieks and seemed to as if I'd heard nothing at all. I only thought of bringing Sersha away, but no matter how I tried to put the strength into my fing in my fingers, the ash would still slip and fall through the cracks. Sasha. A hand reached out to me. Time to collect clear out, Jane. Here, lemon tea. Warm up. <laughs> If you want to cry, just let it out. I can't get the tears out. I can feel your anger. Do you hate them? Perhaps. You got those soldiers to grab a Taran who suppo supports the riots. That make you feel any better? No. Maybe. 
I hate myself even more. If I didn't hand that slip over, Sersha wouldn't have died, would she? But all I wanted was to stop a bigger conflict. I thought so long as I stood up, I could change. We wouldn't call it fate if it always went how we wanted. Jane, can I tell you a story? Go on. I'll try to listen. I'll keep it short. Decades ago, when I was about your age, no, maybe a bit older, back when I worked for the church. You don't seem a thing like those Laterano clerics. Years and experience are pretty good at changing a person. They had me arbitrating a war. Who the sides were or why they were fighting, that's not important anymore. The parties responsible for getting the ball rolling are probably all dust anyway. I just remember there was a city asking for my help. I told them to lay their weapons down, I was ready to be their go-between, and off I went for peace talks with a general from the side sieging the place. The people in the city really weren't up for it, with the whole surrendering to tyranny thing, so I took some drastic measures to get them talking, but we still never came to an agreement in the end. I gave up and left, bringing with me just a few who were willing to quit fighting. But the second day after I left, the city was breached. Pretty much everyone who stayed, in, stayed ended up dead. I believe a good chunk of them all thought, nearing death's door, I'd still come and protect them in the end. But I didn't. Looking back, I guess I was on the other side. I was the sinister pretender who'd given them hope. Gotten, gotten them massacred. But you're not. You sure? Who can say? After that, I renounced my appointment as a cardinal and left Laterano. It sounds like you tried your best. Really? What if I kept at it, tried harder to stop the massacre that was coming? Then you probably couldn't save a single one. Or maybe I could have gone uh, there with unrealistic hopes in the first place. Maybe I should have walked up and put a bullet in the head of the brute about to butcher an entire city. Wouldn't that have other consequences? No one can tell you the consequences of opening fire before you do it. But still, are you telling me you'd stand by and watch? Just let evil happen over and over and over again? I wouldn't. You're right, no matter how I keep questioning myself, I don't regret it at all. Backpipe, I hope you can still make it. Triangle. You came in at the right time. I'm about to dash for our communication center, positioned not far from here. You don't have to enter the city. We'll rendezvous directly at the outskirts. Ah, leader. What happened to you? You sound in awful shape. Were you wounded? <laughs> not a big issue. <laughs> Forget it. It's a little big, but no need to fuss about me. Uh, leader, I don't have much time. We've identified... We are definitely found what we were looking for. These Originium products were sent to the Artillery Battalion. Artillery Battalion? The barracks one? Uh, yes, absolutely. We're in here right now. The barracks have already been breached by the Spectre Force. Uh, to be honest... I don't know. Another thing you need to know. The Originium products we found had all gone through modification. What kind of modification? I only came by a part of it. Their structures aren't whole. Someone's taken out the parts with active Originium. Do you still remember the serial bombing case at Stockton? The offending group created a huge amount of incompletely combusting bombs and caused grave Originium dust pollution in the core district in retaliation against the government. R right. <coughs> uh, you, you get what I mean. <sighs> they have us surrounded. We're out of luck hiding. And Snare? The others? Snare's next to me. There's a bolt clean through her heart. She went without too much pain, fortunately. <sighs> Bass and 
mandolin are still in, in the warehouse. Sorry, I couldn't bring them. You did all you could. You're a fine leader. Am I, then? Surely not as good as you, leader. These hostiles, they're bizarre. They use weapons just like ours. And on top of that, I can hear familiar callouts. Just who is our enemy? That's not important, Triangle. You all come back alive for me. You hear that? This is an order. <laughs> Got it, leader. I'll keep it in mind. RIP. Anyway, like I said, we're gonna be including some unit descriptions from here on out. Uh, one of those begins on this very stage. As mentioned in the description of the text, we have a unique unit right here. But I also want to add some of these descriptions just to, just to showcase how weirdly geared uh, the Spectre Force is. And that unlike the, uh, the reunion forces from the previous story chapters, these guys are an actual, while hodgepodge when it comes to equipment, these guys are an actual army. So, starting off with the Sniper. A Sniper in the Dublin Forces. The crossbows they wield bear the signs of Colombian modification. Equipped with a refracting mask crafted by Shadowcasters, they are rather resistant to regular Reginium arts. Moving on to the Phalanx Infantry. A Phalanx Infantry in the Dublin Forces. The Phalanx tactics they utilize evolve from the combat formations used in Gaul. In the Phalanx, Nearby infantry will support one another, increasing the might of the formation. And just for, as a side note, for uh, people who are listening to this are either new to the story or are just following along with the story without playing uh, themselves, Gaul is a country that does not exist anymore in the world of Arknights. Essentially, they are uh, the Arknights version of France, but this France got absolutely annihilated out of existence. The only things you can find about Gaul is if you maybe find documents that are left over in other places, uh, documentation of the war, and uh, the best place for us players to find information about Gaul is literally the, the entirety, pretty much, of uh, Integrated Strategies 2. That thing is just seeping with artifacts and descriptions and uh, tiny little history lessons, I guess, about Gaul. But yeah, that country does not exist anymore. That is a dunzo. But then we come to this this guy, the Tomb Keeper Grotesque, a special arts creation from the Dublin forces created by their leader Mandragora. According to Mandragora, back when she was studying Originium Arts in an outskirts cemetery, the Tomb Keeper Grotesques was the first companion, was her first companion. Its outer appearance has gone through many redesigns, with the latest being based of a Sarkas from an ancient bloodline. And this is pretty much why I wanted to include these, at least, in the description here. Based of a Sarkas from an ancient bloodline. Pretty much so far throughout the story, we know that, uh, or at other stories, we know that Sarkas are pretty much comprised of many different races inside of them. From the ones that are just being called devils, or uh, what's the other one? Demons. Then we have vampires, we have wendigos. Pretty much think any cryptids, and they are probably a Sarkas <laughs> to some extent. Uh, but yeah. Interesting, so they were gar gargoyle-esque Sarkas at some point? Question mark? Anyway, moving on to stage 9-10. Thunder's Rumble. To purge the shadows that creep into every corner, the city is forced to tear apart its own flesh. And this has obviously the after story. Same enemies here, the only addition with extra text on them would be the Dublin Heavy Defender. A Heavy Defender in the Dublin Forces. 
The armor technology they use comes from Victoria, while their boots were designed in Lithanian. Their shields look extremely similar, similar to a newly patented product from Casimir Roar, Roar Guards Company. See what I mean by hodgepodge? They have equipment from everywhere, essentially. But anyway, moving on to the story. Given I'm here, all of you can come out now. <laughs> Lieutenant? How are my people? Your subordinates are here. Rest assured, they're only unconscious. I don't mean Chalos group. You know who I mean. <laughs> don't push me, or I won't be able... Or I won't be... Or it won't be my shield against your chin. <coughs> if you're going to draw your sword, you'll be attacking a colleague. <laughs> colleague? At one point, since the moment we entered County Hillock, have you ever treated us as colleagues? Answer me. <coughs> Even supposing you cut my throat here, you can't alter the Colonel's decision. Is that so? You've never heard the degree of what the Tempest Platoon soldiers can do, have you? How many did Triangle cost you? Half your company? It's just me alone here, but I guarantee you, you won't want to know how long it takes, it takes me to put you all to rights. L lay down your weapons. Or else we'll, we'll kill her in on the spot. Cello. I mean it. Make one move, and my crossbow is shooting straight through her neck. <laughs> Alright. You win. Subdue her! Quickly, together now! We can't let her touch her sword and shield again! Hill, you tell Hamilton... Victoria is ashamed of him. The Colonel has no need whatsoever for Victoria's gratitude. <clears throat> Got the data all nice and pretty. Uh, yes, lass, it's all here. Wonderful. I see Oliver's all done with the comms too. Collaborating businesses have received notice as pretty agreement cl clauses. They can either seek an office in another city nearby or terminate the contract. <sighs> Looking at it, these aren't losses for us to sneeze at. Rhode Island isn't the only company taking a hit in the chaos of war. True, no way around that. I just look at the chairs and tables in here and there's a twinge in my heart. This place of ours was still empty, back when I first came to County Hillock. A little early for separation anxiety, Oliver. How do you know we won't be right back, huh? You're right. I hope, I hope the city can return to the old peaceful every day soon enough. Storehouse medications inventory finished. I need to to ration out these meds. Each one of you needs to bring enough emergency medication, make sure everyone makes it smoothly to the closest branch office. There's still a lot left over, sharing like that. There'll be some pressure if we take it all, we don't have that ma many hands after all. Sure, as quiet as ever, but I can tell you have your own ideas. The people in the city, they need medicines. So too. If this war scales up, everything's gonna be in short supply, especially a rip of your painkillers and suppressants that need to be taken long term. You must have a list of hospitals in the area. Already sorted. Think of a way to get it to them. No matter who these organizations serve, get as much as you can to all of them. And don't forget the little alley clinics. Plenty of them out there without signs, but a lot of our friends around here rely on them. 
Alas, is this really proper? We never bypass local healthcare, directly providing medical organizations and individuals with pharmaceuticals. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And it's not like a hospital is gonna refuse an anonymous donation from concerned citizens, right? True. So you got it all figured out, eh? But then, who will take charge of sending it? The people around, around all know we're Rhode Islanders. I will. I can help Shredder parcel the medicine and then I'll deliver it. Jane, you all better. My wounds aren't bleeding anymore. You know, you know, I'm not asking about the wounds. I didn't want to be tucked alone in a corner crying while you were all bustling about. I'm glad you can help, but we've got a lot of... a lot of meds here. <laughs> Please, just a movie your stamina. I just don't want Rhode Island wor uh, work getting in the way of your own plans. It's alright. From here on to the zone of battle, there just so happens to be plenty of hospitals and clinics along the way. Once I'm done delivering, I'll rejoin you. Just a little left. It'll be done with wrapping up in no time. Then it's about time we get on our way. As Outcast speaks, she draws a revolver from the holster at her side. <laughs> Whoa, that's your gun? That it is. For a Sancta, pre-op preps only complete once your gun's loaded. It doesn't look like your chamber's full. Under normal circumstances, five rounds is enough to do the trick. When I was back at the landship and ate with Barty's group, I heard a lot of stories from the field about you. You once took down three Colombian bandits with a single bullet and used three to scatter a whole mercenary team. If I had to guess, there wouldn't be any enemy out there worth six shots, straight shots. Can't say for sure. After all, there is always a bigger beast. But I made a promise to someone that I'd never fire a sixth round lightly, because we made a bet. I can't help but be curious, what kind of bet would make someone like you change up how you work? That's a long story. The short version is, that friend of mine tried every way around the sun to show me an easy retirement. And I always had a feeling that even if I retired for real, someone like me just couldn't li live peacefully. Like, right now? I never imagined County Hilo could turn, turn so restless. It was just a day or two ago, we were all huddled together playing cards and drinking tea. A lot of times the situation's like the color of the sky, shifting on and on. If it's up to me, I'd sure like this retreat operation to go nice and quiet-like. Best case scenario, I don't even need to fire one round. Lass, it's all ready. Friends, it's time to say goodbye. Jenny. You don't need to be so sad, Uncle Oliver. I trust in what Outcast says. We can surely see each other again. Jane, be careful. I will, Shredder. All of you too, be sure to take care of yourselves. Oh, did I hear thunder? Uh, it'll be raining soon enough. No, something's not right about that sound. Jane, stay inside for now. <clears throat> Mr. Chef, Mr. Chef, are you here? Uh, yes, I'm here, I'm here. Stop it with the banging. There's too much lamp black on the office door. Can't stand up to knocks. Okay, good, you're still here. Here's the thing, I need a messenger. We've got important information that needs sending out. Yeah, I understand. Fancy that I've got something to give you, too. Huh? What's this? A piece of paper? It's a list of stationed officers. The one named Louis Kelly. He just handed it to me. Captain Kelly? How do you get in touch with you? 
Relax, he's got no clue who I am. It was only cause I was the last person he ran into. I was going to go poking around for, uh, for the latest. Still remember my actual job after all. Didn't imagine I run into the troops arresting him. Arresting him? You mean Captain Kelly's been arrested by his own? They said he was harboring Oripothix. But that can't be right. His son passed from Oripothy a few months ago. The whole city knows that. The first thing he did was report the news his son's gotten ill. These people. Using such a tragic illness as an excuse. That's beyond shameless. Not just once or twice either. For people wanting to use any form of discrimination as a front, it's true. Oripothy is an especially good pre pretense. Just take... Just take this time. The troops are weeding out any inside people uh, born Taran. Officers or soldiers, so long as they were kindred with Tarans in some way, were stripped overnight of any right to act freely. Clearing out the barracks, barracks as Tarans? In wartime, press for people? I've got an awful feeling about this already. So, Captain Kelly slipped me this, uh, this like his life depended on it. Wanted me to give it to the soldier not from the barracks who's constantly be been hanging around here as of late. <laughs> Mr. Chef, this is proof the barracks are making illegal originium weapons. Uh, what? Ham Hamilton's lost his mind. I want you to find a trustworthy messenger, give him this paper and our report about the Spectre Force both, to be treated as intelligence and taken out of County Hillock straight away. This is the Captain... Captain's endeavor in, the, in his final moment. We cannot waste it. Can't do that. This information is too important and we can't rely on a civilian messenger. How about this instead, miss? I'll make this trip myself. Mr. Chef, you were a messenger too? Don't forget, passing on information is part of our lamplighter's profession too. Uh, finally, I can take on a decent assignment at long last. Excitement's got my hands and legs shaking. Uh, wait, hold on, there's some sound outside. It's lightning, isn't it? I'm feeling doubtful about that. It's fine. I've been here in County Hillock how many years now? No matter change changes when it wants to. I'm used to it at this point. A little lightning and rain can't hold me back. I'm off. The, mes the messenger charges into the recess of the street with nary a look back. On his head, a hard rain is pouring down, and the thunder gradually nears, getting concentrated. Louder. This... this isn't lightning. No, Mr. Chef! This is bombardment! The messenger isn't in time to hear her words. Countless shells come down with the rain, exploding the moment they contact the ground and walls. The blast waves tear effortlessly through the gel material, blisteringly and voraciously melting the metal makeup. But the more fearsome thing takes advantage of the illness that bores beneath the city's muscle and bone. Incomplete combustion sees immense formations of originium crystals, solidifying dense within the open wounds of streets and buildings, as if in the dirty rain, identically and rapidly, bloom pure black flowers. Ooh boy. Alright, anyway, moving on to stage 911. No story on this stage, just the usual of title and description. So, titled Tug of War, we strive to take back the city. But will the ghosts go easily? Nothing too special here outside of the casters who apparently are responsible for developing these uh, masks that, that everybody is using. But more importantly, we have the flying soldiers now. It says here, a flying soldier in the Dublin forces. 
The steam propulsion device they use originates from a secret laboratory owned by the Victorian military. As it has only recently been deployed in battle, its power output is still unstable. Moving on to 912, here we continue with the story, titled Apparitional Waves. Eliminate one, and there are even more. The enemy pours forth endlessly, only the city itself seeming to pay the price. Only a before story, so let's begin. Is everyone okay? <coughs> we took cover in time. Thanks for the warning. <coughs> Jenny, what about you? You in one piece? I'm okay. Outcast covered me proper. But what happened outside? I hear lots of screaming and the children. Jane, don't go outside yet. All of you, stay low and stay in cover. Get away from the windows. An explosion of this scale always comes in waves. Mm, ah, my leg! The bookshelf's got my leg pinned! Will, give Fred a hand. Uh, thanks, mate. I can move now. Are you bleeding anywhere? I'm fine, just a little bit. Stay it, kid. Take that acute infection inhibitor right now. Huh? Lass, I got a gash on my leg. Because of the splinter, that's all. No, you don't get it. Right now, you're in at the highest possible level of infection risk. Do you see the black crystal that smashed through the windows? Uh, my god, I... Is that active originium? That it is. You mean, all the black stuff that blanket to the streets all of it i'm afraid so i i can't believe it doesn't this mean the whole city is in terrible danger damn it lass we've got to hurry and rescue the townsfolk we're short on time but we need to save as many as we can any objections i figured oliver would raise his hand knock me all you want later but get your arms moving and uh, now, and get that first aid kit packed. Fred, you're hurt. Stay here and coordinate the rest of us. Will, go home and check on your parents. I can go with the rest of you. Don't be an idiot, boyo. Family's more important than work. Bring some medicine with you. And check on your neighbors once you've done helping your family. Thank you, boss. Shredder, old mucker, looks like you and I have got a few more streets to take. Don't worry about me, Oliver. It may only be a temporary agreement, but I am an operator under your wing nonetheless. Lass, don't be absurd. I'm being serious. Leave the District 10 and its surroundings to me. That's the epicenter. It's way too dangerous. Do we have a choice? Give me a temporary set of comms too. We'll give each other pro progress reports. I'm going to... Uh, Jenny, this rescue op's not a playdate, and you've not gone through training like the rest of us. You don't need to put yourself in harm's way. Whose bloody idea was it to dump all this active originium on a town anyway? They've got to be out of their minds. They bombed so much land in such a short period of time. Whoever planned this attack must have at least, must have at least 10 brand new ground suppression howitzers. Not much artillery. I watched the battle over the past few days from afar, and there are some formidable casters among these so-called rioters. That gives their force a certain degree of stealth capability. But it's not enough to hide so much material coming into town, especially not from the garrison's watchful eyes. And they're not stupid enough to point their cannons at a city block they finally managed to break under their control, as if they'd blown up all of the locals, their own men included. You. You mean... Jane, you know the answer. No, it can't be. You mean our men annihilated a city block? It was us who killed all these townsfolk, condemned countless more to death by a ripathy? 
It's the barracks. They know they can't win a war with the Tarans on the other side. With no way to tell friend from foe, they'll take them all down in one shot. Even the common folks. And they use the dirty bomb precisely because it saves them the trouble later on. The infected get rounded up and that gives them the most righteous excuse to dispose of the Tarans. They use the people as a tool like that? Isn't the Victorian army meant to protect its citizens? You're agitated, I can tell. That's because you've got a kind heart that most soldiers lack. Over the last few centuries, the Victorian army has trampled all kinds of nations and peoples across the world, and it was never out of the goodness of their hearts. Now I see why the townsfolk thought the rioters were in the right. But they're just as ready to use innocent lives for their own gain. They've got different masks on, but their faces under them are just as ugly. What's the difference? Then, is Rhode Island the only side doing what's right? How well do you know Rhode Island? I trust Uncle Oliver and everyone else here, and I've known to trust you ever since the day we met. And how well do you know me? Lass, why be so intense? Jenny here needs some time to take this all in. It's okay, Uncle Oliver. Oliver, I know what Outcast is trying to tell me. I really am thankful you took me in when I had nowhere to go. And I really am still confused. Whenever I pick a side, someone tells me I don't belong. But at least for the time being, I know what I have to do. Please, let me come with you. I want to help the injured outside as best as I can. Even if some of them were th throwing rocks at you, chasing you away just a minute ago? It's just as you said. I can't stand by and watch evil happen over and over. This has nothing to do with what side I choose. You hear that, Oliver? You're the officer in charge of County Hillock. Will you let Jane Willow join our ranks, if temporarily? I... I've got no problem with that. We've got all the first eight, uh, eight kids packed. Jenny, you can come with any of us. I'm going to the central block too. <laughs> so you're going with uh, the lass? <sighs> I thought you'd be scared of her after all that just, all that just now. Mm hmm? Nothing. If everyone's ready, let's go. Remember, your own safety comes first. You've got lots of cont contaminated ground to look out for, and enemies to keep in mind too. Given the situation, forces on either side won't be too friendly to us. Well, that looks lovely. Mr. Chef! Mr. Chef! Uh, where to start? We've got wounded everywhere. <laughs> no, I have to find Chef. He should be around here. I need to get him out of town. I... Uh, uh, what's got my leg? A, a hostile? Uh, no, you're out like a light. No threat to me. Me. Later, let me move this rock. Let's got your leg pink first. <sighs> there we go. Oh, it's all mush. And these black crystals look serious. <coughs> Kill me. I can't. Infected are dirty. I mustn't be solid like that. I wish. Nothing's wrong with hanging in there to live another day, is there? You don't get it? This is a fate worse than death. Alright. I don't get it. Fine then. I'm looking for someone. No one's gonna help for you now. Mr. Chef! Mr. <coughs> what are you tugging my leg for this time? This... This apron. Mr. Chef! The rock crushed Chef too. No wonder I couldn't find him. The intel's still here. He tried his best to protect it till the very end. I can tell. 
<sighs> Mr. McMartin, I don't know your real name, but I will remember you for what you've done. Rest in peace, my friend in arms. Your bravery won't go to waste. And you, I need to thank you, nameless hostile. I should give you what you want, but I can tell you'll be gone soon even if I don't do a thing. Any last words? <laughs> the leader... You're about to peg out, and your leader is what comes to mind? <laughs> we will give rise to a fire of rebirth. Where are you looking at? More and more enemies are pouring in through the ruins. Reinforcements? The cannons didn't do a thing. Captain, they're all gonna be in danger. I need to regroup with them. My mission's a failure. In that case, taking the communication center is our last chance. Alright. Uh, I do not think we have anybody new here. Yeah, pretty much same enemies. 913 is titled Battlefield Rescue. Even if it must cross a raging inferno, Rhode Island will not abandon a single infected who needs help. So this contains the after story. Pretty much same uh, enemies here. The only one included right now is the flamethrower guys who pretty much have a standard description here. Nothing too nuts. Pretty much brings the Flammenwerfer. Anyway. Colonel Hamilton, I hope you understand what you've done. What I've done? I've succeeded in defeating Victoria's enemies, and brought us all an all-too-rare victory. You truly think you'll win? We have eradicated a rabble occupying the city hall and our other important facilities. You can hear it, can't you? Our troops are taking back the city bit by bit. Suppose things do go as you intend. The Spectre Force never recovers from this, and you successfully defend County Hillock. You will still have brought Victoria a terrible, irreconcilable defeat. What nonsense are you spouting? I see. You're still soft on those commoners. Let me say this again, Scamandros. This is war, and victory comes hand in hand with bloodshed. Enough rationalizing your actions. The locals here have always been part of your plan. When you ordered the artillery battalion to make those dirty bombs in secret, the Spectre Force wasn't anywhere close to infiltrating County Hillock. Not one to give up easily, are we? But fine, all has gone without a hitch, and there is no opportunity left for you to get in the way. Without a hitch, because you fanned the flames of war you saw before you. War is not an end, but a means. The wars we fought over the past decades were meant to safeguard Victoria's peace and prosperity, but you, in an afternoon, you laid to waste a lifetime of hard work. How dare you blindly attack the common folk in the name of the Victorian army? Regardless of ancestry, these people are still Victorian citizens. They call themselves... They, they call themselves Tarans. And how much of our country's population is Taran? One-tenth? One-fifth? Right, you see them in the minority, but when the ire of so many is set alight, it could very well burn down the whole empire. <laughs> they stand no chance against the might of the Victorian army. They should never have had a need for that chance. Look at that book you're reading. You marvel at the achievements of the first Aslan King, but did you ever consider what it was that propelled a foreign Aslan to become ruler of Victoria? If the Aslans hadn't signed an armistice with the Dracos, and if the Draco King Gale hadn't yielded to the royal family's decision, the Victoria we know today would never have existed in the first place. What right do you have to push Victoria to the brink of civil war once again, all for your own hatred and prejudice? 
Do you really believe everything you just spouted, Scamandros? Do you really believe that I, the commander of a single garrison in the countryside, could steer the Empire of Victoria with a wave of my hand? Have you ever wondered why? Why Londinium is so deafeningly silent? <laughs> I could have killed you. Even being the noble you are, Londinium would have... Londinium would never hold me accountable for the death of a lieutenant to rebel cannon fire. But I did. I respect your loyalty to Victoria, and I cannot bear to see so-called human nature blunt her blades. Open your eyes. The war began long ago, and until the last of our enemies lies dead, we will never have true victory. Have you ever considered that all you do could be playing right into those enemies' hands? What you fear is, in fact, my greatest hope. I wish for the fate of the Tarans to be known across all of Victoria. It is not the people I want to destroy. No. I look to destroy their courage. I want the whole world to know that, should they dare to turn against us, they must be prepared to withstand the fire of Victoria's rage. How much innocent blood will it take to douse these flames you, dis you started today? Grand Dukes with sinister motives, all the surrounding countries with their hidden agendas and the outsiders teeming with ambition. With all these ill-meaning sides gathered in one spot, Londinium, maybe even all of Victoria, endures far more pressure than one place should bear. All those parties biding the time biding their time in just one little push, and bang. The fire will spread, and in one stop at the Tarans, it will spread all across the once per prosperous lands, sparing no one in its path. And how is that worse than letting these parasites shoo you hollow from the inside out, not doing a thing to stop them? It seems there's no going back for you. In that case, we have nothing further to discuss. Perfect then. I have no need to keep you locked up here. Away with you, if you please. Once you release me, I will make sure you answer for your crimes. I swear this on Triangle's team. No matter what happens, as long as I live, I will see your I will see you court martialed. <laughs> you think that's enough to frighten me? Listen, Scamandros, if Victoria wishes to lay down judgment, she knows where to find me. And I can't wait to see it done. Cello, a boy? We're making for the communication center. If Backpipe fails to escort the messenger out of the city, then that will be our last chance and we must seize it. Considering the situation, the communication center has most likely fallen to the enemy. This will be a dif difficult battle, but we've never been the type to shy, to shy away. Forward, soldiers of Victoria. We do this for Triangle now, for her team. What's the situation? I'm not getting a response. Hill? You're not here. How dare you desert your post? Where did you go without my specific instruction? <clears throat> There's way too many wounded here. We need to get the others. We need to get the ones with light wounds in the buildings that are still standing. Anyone with more serious injuries or symptoms should be taken to the closest clinic. Remember the, to quarantine them. There aren't enough beds in the clinic. District 17, the Taran Quarter, suffered the worst of the damage in the bombardment. Some residents cleared out an area to set up a few tents with a few dozen beds to act as temporary bases. I passed on all the previous methods you've taught me, and a few volunteers are moving the less gravely injured to the tents now. As soon as I finish taking care of this, of the first aid supplies we have left here, I'll go and join them. 
You're good at this, and they trust you too. <laughs> One of the things I learned in the army over the years is how to make friends. They always tell me the guards of honor are the face of the military, and I never adopted it. I've got used to them praising Victoria's glory and prosperity with their applause and cheers. That's definitely part of what Victoria means. Say what they will. But it's not the whole story. After the uh, conversation we had, I remembered some things from ages ago I'd forgotten. My dad's a lawyer, and he used to tell me stories about how my granddad's granda, granda came to Victoria with nothing. He went from rags to riches. The Victoria he described was an advanced, open-minded, prosperous country. Here, technology and capital con uh, conquered savagery. The people's hard work and wealth wouldn't be destroyed just like that by catastrophe or racial conflict. In making it to such a magnificent land, we Vuvier were able to live a civilized life compared to one of barbarism and violence in the old country. Victoria was the most advanced industrial industrialized nation in the world for a very long time. But we had to give up a lot in order to become Victorians. When I was five, I climbed to the top of the tallest tree in our garden. My dog caught me having a blast and gave me a good scolding. Then he looked then he locked me in my room and gave me dozens of books to read. The next day, he hired a Lithuanian piano teacher for me. I missed the view from the top of the tree, but I didn't give it much thought. I knew my dad was doing it for my own good. He was helping you to get used to the rules. That's right. Books, piano, the garden. He understood that those were all things we'd need to know in order to enjoy the life we had. And I also remembered another thing. This one time after school, I saw a few older kids bullying a young feline girl behind my favorite bakery. They laughed at her, saying her clothes were dirty and that she didn't know anything. After they left, I went, I went up to her and gave her a few novels I had in my school bag. I thought she'd be able to talk to the kids her age once she finished reading them, and the others wouldn't pick on her anymore. About a week later, I was all excited, went looking for her so we could talk about the books, but she just shook her head and handed them back to me. I could tell right away, she never even flipped them open. I was really mad, he was trying to befriend her, lending her my books, and she didn't even accept my kindness. It wasn't until much later I realized she couldn't read. She was the child of a bakery worker, not even a baker. How was she supposed to get an education? Forget enjoying any of the same things you did. It turns out even being able to read a novel is a luxury. Victoria's always been an unequal society, hasn't it? I wasn't willing to accept that before. I'd let myself grow accustomed to the rules, and that was how I became a proper Victorian. And those who live outside the rules, well, our country would never accept them. It takes courage to open your mind on your own like that. Waking up from a dream of, glorif of a glorified imagination of a civilization shaped by a people's collective consciousness isn't easy. Trust me, I know that better than anyone. <laughs> oh. I started thinking while I was reading this in preparation for this chapter. That first sentence... Waking up from a dream of a glorified imagination of a civilization shaped by a people's collective consciousness isn't easy. Collective consciousness being the key word here. I'm pretty much just seeing at, at the guide ahead story and the Laterano, whole, whole Laterano spiel. Anyway, moving on. Because you're from Laterano? Because I left Laterano. If we get the chance, I'm hoping to hear about your past, instead of having you listen to the silly troubles of an ordinary girl. You're no ordinary J You're not ordinary, J Jane. No one should call herself ordinary. Thanks. All your comforts keeping me from wa wasting away, honestly. 
wallowing in my misery. You've never stopped putting in the effort to do your best work. I've got everything packed. I'll take it over to the temporary medical base now. Stay alert on the way. Right. The whole city's in chaos. Thankfully, the garrisons uh, stopped attacking and the rioters have mostly dispersed. As long as the uh, citizens can band together, there's still hope for County Hillock. Man is far stronger than we can ever imagine. A lot of ambitious types find themselves on the verge on the wrong side of history when they underestimate when they, when they underestimate that. <sighs> the biggest problem is we don't have enough medicine. We can at least clean the clean and bandage their wounds. I still have medicine with me. I don't need the ones you've shared just yet. If I can use some of it, we might be able to save a few more souls. Put it back. Don't even think about it. Make sure you're safe before you go saving anyone else. So you can save even more of those who need saving. Yeah, okay, I got it. I'll come back once I'm done delivering this. We've taken care of most of the wounded here. Are you going to head to the other side of the statue? Oi, lass. I'm scoping the area with my binoculars. And I'm seeing an injured girl not far away from where you are. Any details? She's young. I can't make out her race. Weir, maybe? How is she looking? Not good. I think... I see a huge originium shard sticking through her abdomen. Chances are she's infected now. Looks like she's lost too much blood and passed out as well. I'm heading there now. Wait, Lass, that's an active war zone. I don't see any hostiles nearby, but that area was taken over by the rioters not long ago. Besides, the building right behind her is their command center. So? Let... Wounded Lass is very likely one of their key personnel. Since when has Rhode Island cared about sides when providing aid to, the, to those in need? Uh, sorry, this isn't a judgement I can make. Oliver, have you been listening in? Yes, Lass, I'm not prepared to act rashly either. If she has to do with this whole mess, it might be risky for our company. I get it. You see someone at the center of a power struggle and who... And who just got infected? What I see instead is an infected who is gonna die in the power struggle afterwards. And before she finally dies, a whole bunch of other strugglers will swirl around her, sending even more to their deaths. But as long as there's still a glimmer of hope that I can stop that ugly mess, I can't give up. Less. I can't talk to you out I can't talk you out of it, but I will follow your lead. No, Oliver, I'm in a position to give you orders, and I certainly don't want to. But remember, and make sure you write this in your after-action report. This isn't a Rhode Island elite operator making a call. This is Outcast's personal decision. But... Right, and don't forget your but. Temporary Operator Outcast did not follow the officer in charge's evacuation orders and opted to rescue an individual who constituted a security risk. Something like that. Say what you want, even. Forget Rhode Island. You're putting yourself in serious danger. And that is why we can't drag even more people into this mess. It's better if Rhode Island has nothing to do with this operation. You and your op operators can follow the original plan. As soon as the rescue operation is done, you get out of County Hillock with all the documents. Lass, I'll stay with you. Shredder? Oliver, feel free to add another note to the report that you fired me here on the spot. Oh, pardon, wrong voice. Oliver, feel free to add another note to the report that you fired me here on the spot. You've got to be out of your mind. Okay, fine, fine, go. You're saving an infected, aren't you? That, That's Rhode Island's bread and butter. I'm not leaving without any of you. Go to the rendezvous point on time. 
Thanks, Oliver. You're a great leader. Shredder, I appreciate the help, but I hope you'll take my advice. That is, stay here. I'll go by myself. Whatever happens, do not come after me. Go straight to the rendezvous point. Right. I'll be here. Outcast. Jane, you aren't trying to stop me, are you? Are you really going to save her? I heard she was one of the rioters' central figures. She might even be the one who killed Sersha. Honestly, I doubt the mysterious group with big plans would leave their true leader to die on the streets. <sighs> that's uh, that's all right then. I, I feel much better now. But what if she was the one who killed her? What would you do? Would you ask me to leave her to die? To tell the truth, I don't know. But I agree with what you said. She's a poor infected girl who desperately needs our help. I guess I might ask her once she's out of danger. Never mind, I'm probably overthinking it. I'll stop wasting your time. Off I go then. Uh, hold on, one more thing. Remember what you told me? Make sure you're safe. Make sure you're safe yourself before you help anyone else. Well, looky here. Our little Jenny, Jenny is trying to educate me. No, I wouldn't presume to. Don't worry. It's just, uh, it's just as we said. I'm saving a regular old infected. <laughs> Regular all infected. Alright. Same round of enemies. Moving on. The next stage after this is a material grind only stage. S9-1. Titled Holding Ruins. The unrelenting firefight has destroyed the streets. But we still must come up with every way to stop the enemy. Continuing to 914. Banner in the wind. Battered in the storm and rain, some hold their position firm, and some bravely step forth. Pretty much same lineup of enemies, nothing new to add here. So, let's continue with the before story of 914. <clears throat> 5.57pm. Rainy, County Hillock, unoccupied house in the vicinity of District 10. Well, sh yeah. <clears throat> Finally awake, huh? Considering the damage your lungs have taken, just breathing is going to hurt like a bitch. You'd better save your air. Your abdomen was pretty much torn open. You're in worse shape than I thought. What kept you alive? Uh huh. Not that I'm a doctor, but I know a thing or two about the anatomy of this race or that. My friend thought you thought you were a bouvier. You can't blame him for that. He's young. He never saw your ancestors tromping across the world. <clears throat> Simmer down. That won't be good for you. I've seen your arts, and I've taken some precautions. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to set this house on fire. Now look at that face there. Feeling a little relieved now that you know you can't fight me. That might be more natural than your instinct to defend yourself. Might be the truer emotion, one from a deeper place in your heart. No. Sounds like you're mighty friendly with that word. You were forced to become someone you don't want to be. I can see that in your pain. Who's using you? The moneyed ones who just have to stick their hands everywhere? Maybe the shadows in the high tower? Or some thirsty nationalists ready to bring their country back? No, none of those. You're a gang with a puppet for a leader. There's no way you could have put this together in such a short time under Londinium's watchful eyes. Hmm. You, you're a lesser kind of shadow. Showed, 
shoved out onto the stage. Now, does that mean your puppet masters of your same blood? Stop. Stop what? Too scared to even let me talk about him? Or is it her? Sure enough, it's not just you. The whole of Victoria. No, the whole world trembles in fear of that one. She must be about your age, but she turned the tables on the ones who'd use her. And so quickly, too. It looks like change is coming sooner than I thought. We'll need to be ready. You let them run up. No need to go guessing at my motives. I didn't care for who you were when I decided to save you. Now I actually know who you are, but it hasn't changed my mind one bit. You are... You're better off not knowing who I am. As soon as you're strong enough to move, you'd best skedaddle. And don't ever tell anyone who saved you either. I'm not gonna let you die here. That's all you need to know. Okay, thank... You can thank me later. All I can do right now is to remove the infected tissue and stop the bleeding. You got run through with the most infectious kind of active virginium. A heaping help helping of virginium granules shot into your circulatory system through those wounds. I gave you an inhibitor shot, but I'm afraid that won't be enough to stop crystals from forming in your organs and even on your skin there. Soon enough, you'll pass out again with the fever. That's a good thing. Then you won't have to deal with the nasty inside-out pain that comes with the acute attack. You may cough up blood. I'll try to keep, you head, to keep your head up so you don't drown in your own blood vomit. <coughs> and that's just the start of the suffering. You probably can't go back to your old life. Rip a fees were in a whole new course for you. Your followers will abandon you, some will hate you, look down on you. It won't be easy for you to lead again. And it'll be a hard and it'll be hard to get your kin to accept you as you are now. <laughs> oh, there's that face again. That's not despair. No, that's relief. A becoming an Oripathy patient? Well, I don't blame you. No, uh, no matter how intense the artillery barrage, it's never enough to pin down a young red dragon. You're looking to dodge destiny, but fighting something like that's gonna come with a hefty price tag. I got one thing wrong there. You may be less belligerent than your kin, but you're just as tenacious, and no less courageous. Ugh. Relax, get some sleep. I'll be right here. It's too... dangerous. It's dangerous here? That's what you managed to squeeze out before you go dark? Hmm. It's definitely a little too quiet. I'm gonna say you're more than just a pawn to them. Looks like a change of plans. This is a risk, but Rhode Island needs your intel. I'm sure Kaltzit will understand. <coughs> Report. We haven't found her. <laughs> you idiot! What good are you morons when you can't even keep track of one girl? Uh, sorry. You're sure she was struck? Yes, one of my sentinels saw it happen. There was an execution this morning when the bombardments happened. The leader might have... She's our bloody leader. You understand, don't you? You remember what you swore when you joined? Now you run with your tail between your legs the moment the enemy shows. It all happened so fast, we didn't have time to respond. Besides, the leader said she wanted some time alone in order to keep everyone away. So what if I tell you to drop that, you gobshite? And you tell me you're not bloody useless? 
Stop it. Meeting him into a pulp won't do us any good. We just need to know if she's dead or alive, and where she is. Let me do it. Alright, just don't go overboard. <sighs> please forgive me, please. What's going on? <coughs> <laughs> Did you see her? She fell. She fell. <laughs> she fell. And blown up dead. <laughs> dead. That's what you call not overboard. I used too much. Needs to remember this. Well, that's bloody disgusting. Remember, remind me to steer clear of this sick bastard when we test his drugs out. At least we know he wasn't lying. The blast knocked her out right here, and she was heavily injured. It was most likely fatal. But she couldn't have gone far with that wound. So where is she? It's not like she got blasted clean through the ground. I don't mind blowing up the whole street again. Next time you blow up anything, anything up, let people know first. Who said we're blowing up a street? We need to find her, even if we have to burn down the whole city to do it. One street won't stop us. It's clowns like you, stupid as the Victorian army, that make holding the city rapidly more trouble than it's worth. So what do you think we should do? Who's Who takes the fall when the leader finds out we lost her, huh? The leader's anger is not the only thing we have to fear. I invite you to think about it. In the eyes of our enemy, of our many warriors and compatriots, she stands for Dublin. If she breaks free of our control, it won't matter whether our enemies or our ill-meaning friends get their hands on her. It isn't a happy ending. Come to think of it, she she knows all our bloody plans. <sighs> Say, those two ladies, do they know about this? They left as soon as the meeting was over. I don't think they would would have caught word just yet. Mandragor is not fond of the girl. She's not going to care. <clears throat> Harmony. I'm not even sure if she's on our side. Watch your words. We all stand by our leader. Say what you will. I don't care what you do with Harmony, but Mandragor is a good girl. Don't you dare drag her down. Why would we, my friend? She's an inseparable part of our team. Like us, she longs to demonstrate her talents and loyalty to the leader. I've no idea what Harmony said to Mandragora or why it, ha why it has her hanging onto every word. She's too happy to be doing it too, almost like she expects something. What's so important about the transmitter that it's worth delaying our victory? The leader still hasn't shown any hint of approval towards her plans. As long as we can prove to her that we've done no wrong, we still have a chance to persuade her yet. So you mean, we still have to look for her? Even if it must, even if we must search the entire city. Alright, enough chit chat then, let's move. Wait, wake the convict up. Huh? Us five aren't enough to drag her back? Don't forget our agreement. We all will take credit for our achievements. Get a lot of you. You're all... You tell your own mother. If the idea is to keep the outside from catching wind of this, then what are we doing with these troops? Naturally, we'll bring them with us. After all, the more hands, the better. Until we find our quarry. And once we do... I'm sure we all know what comes next. 
no one can escape Dublin. And no one may ever glimpse its secrets. <clears throat> we need to get rid of these bandages. But uh, I washed them already. That's not going to help. The whole box has been contaminated by the originium on the ground. We can't be sure the dust has been completely washed off. Jane, look, I know you're speaking sense, but we don't have enough supplies. Look over there. They're carrying over more people in. They're carrying even more people in. Look at how seriously wounded they are. Are those... Do you know them? I... Yes, I... Knew them. But I don't think they'd want to see me here. Could you look after them? I'll head for the clinic and see if I can find some supplies. Jane, look. Someone's here. All over the way. <laughs> uh, sir, are you here to help us? Out of, the me out of the way means out of the way. Wait, are you... Bronan? <sighs> Go block by block and make sure you're thorough. There's a lot of alleys around here, and she could be hiding ever anywhere. Got it? What are you doing, Ronan? It's us, your neighbors. You put on new clothes and suddenly you don't know us? I have an important mission. Piss off or don't say I didn't warn you. Craig's hurt. Please help him. He's helped you out so much. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just shoves it out of the way. Uh, I... The wounds on her back are serious. And her kid, Craig... He's had a bad wound on his head, too. I need to stop stop their bleeding, but I know they don't look kindly on me. You've searched this whole place? Are you positive no one here matches her description? Are they looking for someone? Uh, no, no. All these people shoving in here, it's a mess. What do we say to the higher-ups if more of them uh, sneak in once we turn and leave? Are they looking for the woman outcast saved? Does that mean she's in danger? I need to go. Oi, you lot, get up and leave at once. Uh, sir, we have far too many wounded here. None of them can move. I give no shit you can't move. Get up and go. I want all these oropathics out of th this district. Keep an eye out on... Uh, keep an eye out in case they pop. Even the Originium shards outside aren't as dangerous as this lot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> let's, take a f let's take a fine example. This boy with the bloody face. B Ma. Craig, Craig, no, please don't take him. I beg you. you. You're not just abandoning them. You're going to kill them? What's your bloody problem? We're Tarans, all of us. What's wrong with a sacrifice for Tara's great cause? Ronan, that's what you said last time, and that's when we lost Sersha. Sersha? It's him. He's the one who betrayed Sersha. And then they took her and they... He traded Sersha's life for that uniform. She deserved it. She betrayed our trust. That's what you get for falling, failing to understand our great leader's struggle. And if you don't cooperate, you're next. Enough. Uh, Jane, I, I thought you left. And who do you think you are? Wait, I've seen you before. You're not Taran, are you? Please, stop. You talk like it sounds so light. Who are you to decide who should sacrifice for anything? What's it you're holding? A banner? You, you're a Victorian soldier. Am I? No, not anymore. But if you insist on trampling on the lives of the innocent, then I am your enemy. Innocent? Do you know what you what they've done? You call them innocent? This child and everyone here, none of them's got clean hands. Then what about you? You traded your own people for your position, and now you turn around to oppress them. Who will judge you? And who are you standing up 
up all cocksure for. Come on, get her out of here. And run up all the infected mingling with the Victorian deserter. It's time we clean them up. Please help us help. That's far enough. What are you trying here? Bugger off already. Look at you carrying that tattery banner wherever you go. You don't have what it takes to be a real soldier, do you? Whether that's so, or whether it's not, I will not let you continue doing evil here. Oh, can you not even cop, cop on? What do they have to do with you? You're going to let them fiddle you like this? Thick as a brick up there, are you? I... <laughs> Crack just... Craig just sobbing. True, I can't speak Taran. I can't cross my heart and claim I've experienced the life you all have. I don't have a rip of it either. But... For the past two years, every day I've walked the same streets as you. I've heard your tears. More than that, I've seen your smiles. I know deep down that we are all the same people living our lives. As long as we are human, we will make mistakes. Those who do should be stopped and judged. They should be tormented by their own hearts. But it's not for some ungrateful brute to decide their fates. You, you're going to protect us? You don't hate us? <sighs> I'd be lying if I said not at all. I'll stop pretending. There's no bitterness between us. What Crack did was wrong, too, and I have no intention of shielding any guilt. But a friend has taught me the evil I see before me has to be di has to be stopped. This has nothing to do with which side I'm on. I'm doing what's right. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, calm down, Craig. You don't need to talk so hard. It doesn't matter if I was ever a good soldier. I've been ready to fight from the moment I deserted. But your wounds... <laughs> RIP! The banner is the cleanest thing I have on me. And there is no better use for it right now. Jane gently wraps the torn piece of the banner around the wound, uh, around the wounded child's forehead. I am sorry, m miss. Don't worry for now, Craig. You get some rest. As for you, soldier, it's time you leave. And before you do, you'll need to pay for what you did to Sersha. What? And you'll make me all by yourself? If I have to. We're with you too. One by one, the wounded men with less serious injuries step out of their hiding spots and stand behind Jane, the girl with her banner held up high. What? What are you all doing? Are you going to resist Dublin? O'Brien, you should be helping me get her. Don't forget how Damien died. No, Ronan, I haven't forgotten about Damien. But on the other hand, I haven't forgotten about Sersha either. We've done a lot of bad. I'm not blind. Now that it's come to this, I can tell who's really been trying to help us all along. She's not even Taran. Do you see the looks in their eyes? We stand together, for now, at the very least. You absolute idiots! You'll all die here for your foolishness! Watch your injuries, don't push yourselves. Leave these villains to me. I will win this battle. No, together we will win this. Alright then, moving on to stage 915. No story here. Titled Scalding Earth. The enemy's flames push through the city ruins. Those of conviction threat the firelight and forge on. Uh we do have a extra unit here. 
but mostly a more heavily fortified caster. Moving on, 916. Breakout. The enemy spills into every street, looking to hide their secrets. Only those who go forth with courage can prevent a massacre. Moving on to 917. Victorian Soldier. From one end of the city to the other, a Victorian soldier fans off an army. We do have two units here that are new. And then that have also slightly interesting descriptions, one being the uh, Companion Guard, a member of the Dublin Forces Elite Oper Operations Squad. The structure of this squad mimics the military system of ancient Minos. The shields they wield are the culmination of many nations' technologies, providing cover for their partners while advancing and protecting all nearby allies from, our, from harm. So even incorporating Minos strats into their uh, military. And the other one is the uh, Companion Shadowblade, a member, a member of the Dublin Forces Elite Operations Squad. The structure of this squad mimics the military system of ancient Minos. When they move along their partners, they gain powerful stealth capabilities and their attacks are much swifter. Again. Minos. And then moving on to the final part for today, stage 9-18, titled Daybreak. Her light struck through the dark veil above. This is the after story. No extra new units here, just a mash of pretty much everything that was up until now. So let's continue and end for today. Uh, right. I got a report that you spotted a white hair spotted a white haired girl with horns here. I'm not sure it's the one you're looking for. Speak. She's really hurt, right? As in, there's a huge hole through her chest and stomach. Go on. A great haired sancta came and carried her away. Got her blood spilled all over the place. It was horrifying. A Sancta, are you sure? I guarantee you I saw a Sancta. Not a whole lot of them in, here in County Hillock. If it weren't for the glowing halo on her head, I wouldn't have seen her in the dark. The halos are a detriment. <clears throat> Where did they go? In the last house there, upstairs. The one with the broken window. She was running up a storm and jumped straight inside. Over there? She's that close? P8, R3. This is B9. What were you two doing? The target's in this district. Your team should have already searched every last house on this street an hour ago. How come I haven't heard from you? What's the funny idea? I'm not getting a peep from you. P8, R3. Answer immediately. Oh god, hopefully I'm remembering this correctly. The Arsalvo. I think? Right? The Arsalvo? Yeah. Uh, essentially, good lord in uh, Irish Gaelic. You're welcome. <clears throat> Do you need me for anything else, sir? If not, I'll be on my way. And I'm, I would appreciate those bandages you promised. Bandages? You won't need them. Uh, what are you doing? Orders from the heads. You've got no one to blame but yourself for seeing what you shouldn't have. Uh, who are you? Isn't what they do these days? Give names before you fight. Uh, um, that almost blew my brains out. You better get going. I'll take care of this baddie for you. Uh, th thank you. No need to thank me. All in a day's work. And he books it. Pile driver spear. A Victorian. Quick, tell the bandit. There are still Victorian remnants in the area. The bandit? 
do all of the Spectre Forces have names? That embarrassing? <laughs> I'm not even gonna... Mm, no, no, no. <clears throat> I think I just beat up a few screaming about some boss called the Convict. You took down everyone at P8? Just you, you alone? There were 30 of them. Well, they were facing the Victorian army. <laughs> they were facing Bagpipe. <laughs> Backpipe, not the Victorian army. <clears throat> and it doesn't change a thing just cause I'm here alone. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she's just flipping them all over the place. Form up, surround her. She's on her own. Formation again? Well, you've got it together, don't you? Hold the line and press forward. Watch each other's backs. And watch that lance too. Don't take her on one on one. Oh? Piling numbers up to take me down? Don't you underestimate my spear. <laughs> what the? <gasps> She's just ragdolling them all over the place. This wooier is too strong. She can, she can down two in one strike. Send the heavy defenders. Everyone else, fall back. Good word to the leaders. Oh, oh, stick around. Last one. Bloody hell! The armor's like paper to her. Fall back. It's now or never. Huh? Flying away on me? Did you? Steal our steam jetpacks, or is it flying machines from off foreign? This lot have a different combat style than the first ones we fought. There is no figuring this spectre force, is there? I wish Triangle was here. My spear can't reach anywhere near that high. <laughs> They're dropping? Is there a crossbowman around? No, those aren't bolts. Are those stones? Gosh, that's definitely no crossbow. <clears throat> Carrying an unconscious patient with, with one arm, Outcast steps out of an empty house on the side of the street. Was that you just now? Thanks for the help. No need to thank me. You saved my ass too, after all. I've always heard how good Sancta are with guns, but I never... I uh, knew you could fling a rock so well. <laughs> Sorry, little lady. My gunplay tends to draw a crowd. Right, you don't hear gunfire every day around. Is your mate hurt? She doesn't seem so good. She was hit during the shelling around noon. Huh? Sorry about that. We almost couldn't st could have stopped that assault. It was a huge mistake, especially with all this innocent folk dragged into the mess. Uh, no sense saying it now. I'm just trying to save as many as I can. Are these hostiles here for you? I reckon so. I saw them hunting the locals. I'm in a hurry, but I just uh, couldn't stand by and watch that happen. They'll pay. Whoa, I just heard them say they lost contact with two squads. I ran into one of them, but was the other one your your handiwork? Fine job. You're mighty fine yourself. But the enemy's got more than just the few squads. They have an entire army, and there's more and more of them pouring into the city uh, since the afternoon. It's gonna be hard to hold County Hillock. If you aren't a local, you better take your pal and leave the city now. We've got hostiles watching the alleyways. Looks like you'll have to leave the other way. Or they all blocked? How could there be so much debris in one city? Well, they aren't here yet. I'll help you take care of uh, what's blocking the passageway out back first. You're not going to retreat? I'm not, not retreating, no. I'll make my way through the city and regroup with my teammates. Through the whole city, crawling with enemies. With most roads cut off by debris. Good thing I already... I'm already halfway through, eh? You're all alone. 
taking them by yourself, and you ain't scared one bit. Scared? The Butterfields never scared me. I'm a pretty... I am pretty worried, though. I've never seen a Victorian city in this kind of shape. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, because I think it's supposed to be French. <clears throat> Lingones? L L Lingones? I don't know. Used to be a massive metropolis many years ago. You could call it the capital of the world, but Victoria and its allies decided to burn it all down. One of, one of man's greatest cities reduced to a raging inferno. It was a hundred times worse than this, believe you me. Right, our textbooks make us uh, winning the battle of the four emperors seem so glorious. The more glory they put on, the crueler they are to the Gauls even. Victoria's done a lot of terrible things in the past. It's not until the flames of war are licking at your ho home that you really feel just how painful it is. <clears throat> We're almost done. Just these fallen columns left. I'll help you. Thanks. We just need to push it to the side. Ugh. One column goes down, and it might just bring another with it. <laughs> Backpipe quietly muttering to herself. Who knows what the future holds? No one knows where Victoria might go until the moment it gets there. Sorry, I just couldn't stop thinking about all that. You shouldn't be helping move columns while you've got that lass on your back there. The job gets done faster when we work together. Right, if we all work together, there's still a chance things could take a turn for the better, eh? <laughs> Look at me blathering on and on about this stuff. What's the difference even if we lose the chance? What's so bad about things getting worse? Even if your home's torn apart, does that mean it's not home anymore? You go and enrich the soil again with your own hands. Isn't that what all folk uh, who live here should be doing? <sighs> Last one. And the road's clear. Quick, signal B9 sends down this alleyway. There's debris blocking the way out the block, out the back, but send a team around just to be safe. The rest of you, stay and watch the entrance. Don't let anyone out. Our command will be here soon. There's more of them. I'll, ho I'll hold it here, lass. Take your pal and get running. That's gonna be difficult, kiddo. Huh? You heard what they said, didn't you? The leaders are coming. And I'm not expecting pushovers like we just fought. That's all the more reason you should go, isn't it? I guess I didn't say it yet. I'm not one to run from a fight. Come, my young friend, give me a hand. Outcast transfers the patient in her embrace to Backpipe. What? Well, that's heavy. Is she really a movie here? <laughs> not a very po not very polite to call a girl heavy. <sighs> I doubt anyone else could uh, would be able to carry her. Good thing I have a Vuvier friend then. She's about your age and a fairly tough warrior too. You mean... I want you to take the patient to the east side of the statue and hand, hand her over to my friends. Tell them I'm sorry I can't keep my promise. They'll know what to do from there. What about you? I'm gonna stay a little longer. Got somebody to wait up for. Is she in here? Uh, yes, sir. The one, uh, the other officers are here too. The intel says there are only three of them, and one of them is both heavily injured and unconscious. In that case, wouldn't just one of you be more than enough to deal with them? Two of them took down three squads, and without so much as a scratch. Are you telling me how ruthless you all are, or does the mission matter? 
So little that you don't mind messing up again and again. No, I wouldn't dare. <sighs> Are they really that tough? At the very least, they're formidable enough that you that you're up and awake. It doesn't hurt to be a little cautious. Don't forget, we have both the unidentified Sancta and Victorian soldier. And she's there with them too. You know what she can do when she's pushed to the brink, don't you? <sighs> I'm starting to look forward to this. The enemies got reinforcements. Leader, this is Backpipe calling leader. Uh, still not getting a signal. I need to get this girl over there right now. Uh, huh? You're awake? No. No. Still asleep. But why is she struggling all of a sudden? Is she having a bad dream? More like a waking nightmare. The looks up as though she feels something. A few faint silhouettes look down at the commotion from atop a tall building nearby. Backpipe hasn't yet realized that the flames around her, extinguished still, are starting to change color. A young soldier who had just passed lies on the ground. The purple flames in his lifeless eyes look as though they could surge out at any moment. She looks back down the street to see yet more hostiles approaching. It's almost time. The enemy's gathering over there. We can't stay much longer. Let's give her a bit more time, Shredder. You know outcasts always punctual. Right. Look, over there. There's two individuals incoming. Outcast, we're over here. Out no, it's not her. Who's that running this way? Backpipe? Huh? So you're the cool Sanctus Lass's friend? That's perfect then. Come on, this girl's your pal too, right? She's heavily injured. The Sancta Lass told me to bring her to you. Outcast. Where is she? Did something happen to her? She seemed like she was doing parted ways. Not sure why, but she told me to apologize to you for her. She said she can't keep her promise that you'd know what to do from here. That then that must mean she said it herself we have to be sure we're safe before we help anyone else because that's how we save even more no jane don't go after her the last said we know what to do from here i i i agree with him do you trust her i only met her the once, but I trust in her. I reckon I knocked out some two dozen on my way here with this girl. Not sure if any of them are uh, chasing after us. The soldiers themselves aren't much of an issue, but if we run into their caster leader, there's no telling how powerful she actually is. So, take your friend and get out of here. What's that flash an explosion no can't be there's not a bomb out there with a flash this bright leastwise not one we'd lived through so it's arts but using arts to your extreme in such a short period of time the caster herself would the place the light it blew through the clouds did the brain stop? <laughs> that fire's from the west. Is it the alley from just now? 
If it wasn't for the direction, I would have thought it was bright out already. R right. The sky is all bright. None of them says another word. The flames kindling the skies are still burning bright. A raging fury that portends the impeding end of darkness above. Or perhaps a shining beacon that impresses the brilliance of life on those aiding each other below. That's the most stunning daybreak I've seen. No wonder she said it to draw a crowd. <sighs> Jane. <sighs> I'm okay. Shredder? Is it time? It is. Let Uncle Oliver know. We got her. Someone seriously infected. And that is where we're gonna end for today. And yes, that little musical note there at the end during that final moment of the scene is pretty much the music that I was using for the background for all of these episodes so far. At least the ones for chapter. And now you know where it's from. But anyway, this will be it for today. Next time, we are going to be wrapping up chapter 9 in its entirety. Only a battle stage left. And then we have quite literally one epilogue scene to wrap up uh, the chapter 9 story. And then there is that thing, all the way back there. Oh boy. I'll be another can of worms. But anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this part. Lots of shit happened. But yeah. It's time to finish the chapter off next time we continue the main story. But for now, I hope you enjoyed it, like I said. And I hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.